State Senate Republican leader Scott Wilk is demanding answers from the Department of Public Health. Following an ongoing CBS 13 investigation into shocking public health failures at the state's $1.7 billion COVID testing lab. Investigative reporter Julie Watts broke the story back in February. And Julie, it sounds like lawmakers are getting the same runaround that you ran into back then. Yeah, guys, you may remember back in February, uh, following our initial whistleblower investigation, the state said then that it would make its investigation public by mid-March. Well, now seven months later, we're still waiting and problems at the lab continue as a $1.7 billion contract is set to renew at the end of the month. They're jeopardizing people's lives. Unlicensed lab techs watching videos and sleeping while processing COVID samples, test swabs found in lab restrooms, incidents of contamination, swap samples, and tens of thousands of inconclusive COVID tests. Those were just the first of many shocking revelations from inside California's $1.7 billion COVID testing lab at the taxpayer's expense. They really want public to know that this lab should not continue operating like this. More than a dozen whistleblowers came forward months ago to expose what they say the state tried to hide. The public deserves to know what's going on in their state lab, and everybody deserves to have correct results. The California Department of Public Health initially denied the allegations, calling our reporting irresponsible, then quickly changed their response. Turned out, state inspectors already knew what we knew, later acknowledging they had found significant deficiencies at the lab months earlier, but never told the California taxpayers who were paying the tab and relying on those COVID results. Every patient sample deals with somebody's life. In a press release, the state downplayed the problem, stating at the time there were only 60 wrong results and 250 samples that couldn't be tested due to lab errors. But they failed to mention all the inconclusive, invalid, and canceled samples. As of August, the state's own data reveals roughly one out of every 42 tests did not return a positive or negative result. Part of that commitment on our new lab is test results that are mandated within 48 hours. The governor's $1.7 billion no-bid contract with Parkin Elmer requires the lab return results in under 48 hours. But now at its peak, the lab's ranked among the slowest in the state, returning between a third and two thirds of recent COVID results in more than 48 hours. This COVID just keeps taking stuff away from us, you know? And as we first reported in May, schools have struggled with false positives from the state lab, keeping healthy kids quarantined for weeks. According to CDPH, more than 1,300 schools and districts are now contracted with the lab. Following our initial reports, the state vowed to make its investigation public by mid-March. And in a May interview, the governor implied it already was. We put it out a number of months ago. But if that's true, his public health officials won't release it, continuing to stall month after month as they deny our public records requests. They did provide us with one email related to our request for an interview with Health Secretary Galley, but redacted every single word. They didn't even give us a the or punctuation. And Secretary Galley has denied every interview request since. Dr. Galley and his team will get you more details in a moment. Even after the governor himself promised answers to our questions. It's a conflict of interest. Meanwhile, whistleblowers are urging lawmakers to commission an independent investigation, noting CDPH is the regulator and investigator of its own state lab. Now, in this letter to Dr. Galley, the Senate Republican leader details how lawmakers have struggled just like we have to get answers and demands the state provide a concrete date for the final public report. Now, CDPH tells us unless that $1.7 billion contract is terminated, it will auto renew under the same terms at the end of the month.